Hello everyone, my name is Adarsh Tatani and I am the founder and CEO at Netensity. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to join this webinar today. Today's presentation will be mainly focused on our new Mover Inventory app and how you can transition to digital inventories using this awesome app. Our webinar host today is Casey Fox. Casey is a co-founder at Netensity and he is also the mastermind behind this amazing app. Casey will give you a tour of the Mover Inventory platform today. I will answer your questions in the Q&A section and Casey will also pause intermittently to personally answer questions. All right, let's get started. Casey, over to you. All right, thanks Adarsh. Uh, welcome everybody, appreciate you joining us. I promise I'm gonna get straight to the app here. Um, before doing that, I just wanna give a shout out to our team. And uh, first of all, um, Adarsh, is my PowerPoint slide up here? Yes, Casey, it is. Okay, wonderful. I uh, just wanna give a shout out to our team uh, who makes all this happen. Um, Adarsh, you guys all know him, um, hardest working man in show business, as they say. Uh, I'm Casey Fox, I'm the co-founder here at Intensity. I also currently own a moving company in California. I've been in the moving industry for about 20 years. Uh, Ruchi, David, Daryl, uh, handling our customers and trying to give you guys the best possible experience. And then behind the scenes, our, our development team who, you know, really make all the magic happen here and, and we couldn't do it without them. So I uh, just wanted to introduce everybody if you didn't know and, and uh, just praise and thank uh, our amazing team who, who makes all of this happen. Um, we offer a, a suite of products. We have a, a CRM for the moving industry, Movegistics. Uh, we also have several companion apps for on-site surveyors, for crew leads with the Mover BOL. We have a referrals app for your referral partners. And uh, our, most recent uh, our most recent product before Mover Inventory was Mover Storage uh, that is available as a standalone product in addition to uh, use with our CRM. And now, you know, we're very excited to introduce Mover Inventory. Um, this is a, a wonderful new product, much needed. Quick overview of some features here. You're gonna be able to scan and build digital inventories. It can be tracked and viewed anywhere. Uh, we're using a QR code based system. There's a customer portal uh, so that the customer can log in, uh, check the status of their inventory items, view exceptions, et cetera. We're also going to have some PDF exports for labels, for uh, printout of the descriptive inventory to submit to uh, DOD bases or send to customers as needed. A lot of custom uh, customizations available, including custom shipment types, stages, and requirements. A uh, beautiful part of this is you'll have unlimited users. Uh, it's really easy to add staff, workers, contractors, OA, DA for a seamless transition. Uh, this is going to be a cloud-based platform, meaning multiple workers can create an inventory simultaneously. Uh, they don't have to all wait on, you know, the driver or one or two guys to put this together. Um, everybody can be in an individual room and, and building the inventory together. You're going to have just exceptional uh, details, photos, notes, digital signatures, custom rooms and items. Uh, this, this app will work offline um, for the supervisor. Because it is cloud-based, you wouldn't be able to utilize the multi-person uh, scanning. Uh, but if you are in an offline situation, uh, at least the supervisor or driver will be able to handle uh, building the inventory. Extensive record keeping, increased documentation, reduced damage claims and missing items, and, and just overall streamlining, streamlining the extremely dated paper inventory process. Okay, uh, just a few more highlights here. Like I said, this is available for use with Movegistics uh, or it is a standalone product. So you can use this all by itself if you like. Uh, we've built this from the ground up to meet requirements for interstate and DOD inventories. And for those of you who do military work, you know that starting next year, 2023, electronic inventories are now gonna be mandatory. The system's extremely easy to learn, easy to train and flexible. Um, with our custom shipment types and stages, you can adapt this for all sorts of projects, uh, even for final mile delivery routes, designer projects, warehousing and distribution, et cetera. This app is gonna be available on all iOS and Android phones and tablets. Um, couple perks here, you know, you can really impress your customer, provide them with detailed portal access uh, and transparency, keep your workers accountable. We've got date and timestamp history logs, 
and ultimately save time, save money, reduce claims, and improve efficiency. You know, this software is going to pay for itself in one or two jobs with the time saved. And without further ado, I'm going to get uh, right into the app for you. I'm going to be demonstrating on iPad. Uh, like I said, this is available on Android tablets, on uh, Apple phones, and on Android phones. Uh, I'm demonstrating on iPad just because it's a bigger screen size. I think it's going to look better for demonstration purposes. I personally prefer uh, the iPhone functionality. It's, it's smaller in your hand. It's easier to use. And it's going to look exactly the same as what you see here. When you log into Mover Inventory, uh, the first thing you're going to see is your shipment list. Now, if you're an admin level uh, user, you're going to see all active shipments and you'll be able to work on any active shipment. If you are a worker level, you will only see jobs that have been assigned to you. We do have search and filters available. Uh, if you have a list of jobs that are, that are currently active and assigned to you, you'll see we've got some really nice tags uh, at the customer level and at the shipment level. Uh, just some quick colorful indicators give your crew some information right out of the gates. You'll also have an overview of customer contact information, uh, addresses, et cetera. Clicking on view details <clears throat> will take you into the job where you can start performing actions. And uh, right here at the click of a button, you can start building your inventory. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add item. It's gonna bring up a QR code scanner for me. And I'm gonna scan a label that I've placed. You'll have a drop down selection for uh, default rooms that you can select from, or you can also create a custom room if you need one. Same thing with item description. Uh, as you start typing, it will uh, make suggestions for you based on default item list. You can also just create your own as you're doing it. You could also use the default item list as a starting point and then add more details to it. Next, you'll see some really quick toggles to add more details about this item. So if it's a carton, I can note if it's carrier packed or PBO. If it's carrier packed, by default, the logged in user will populate, but I can also uh, assign a different user if uh, somebody labeled that box accordingly. You can also note whether items have been uh, disassembled. If they are electronics, you can add a serial number. Disassembled, you can also uh, dictate the user or if it's been done by the customer. This has been declared as high value, you get a prompt to enter the value of the item. And for military shipments, if it's a pro gear item, you can designate it as such and enter the weight right here. Obviously on most items, you're not gonna use all of these fields. They are all optional. The only required fields are room and item description. Uh, the rest of these toggles only apply as you need them. Now that I've started the item, I'll come in and I can add my exceptions. You'll see the familiar codes on just about any inventory sheet you've ever seen. And you can also add a little bit of additional detail down here if you'd like. You can add multiple exceptions uh, or unlimited as you need to. Clicking next will take you to the final screen. Here you can take pictures using your camera or you can upload photos from the gallery. You can add up to five photos per item. If you've chosen a default item from your system, the volume and weight is automatically gonna populate for you. Uh, or if you wanna kind of track it on a per item basis, you can do that here as well. You can enter either volume or weight and click the sync button to sync up at seven pounds per cubic foot. Companies like to track maybe the number of pads that they used for a shipment. You've got a slider for that. And also just a final uh, user of the person who's entering this item. Uh, just like that, the, the item's complete and I can move on to creating a new item by clicking on new item. It's gonna bring up the QR code scanner for me and I can move right along to the next one. 
after you've chosen a room uh, the first time or switched rooms, it will start saving that for you automatically. So you don't always have to make that selection uh, only when you switch rooms. And here's one of the really nice features here. Uh, using the voice dictation can really speed things up here. Uh, so if I select the field and just hit voice dictation down here at the bottom, Samsung dryer model number, X, Y, Z, one, two, three, four. You can save all that typing time. Here I could enter the serial number if I need to. You can also use the voice dictation here. The bottom left corner of the drawer has been dented and previously scratched. Again, all of these fields are optional. Use as few or as many as you need. Member provided stabilizing bolts on site. And on to new item. So after you've got everything stickered and you start building out your uh, inventory, the flow starts to move really quickly. And again, all these fields are optional if you don't want to utilize them. You can then view a summary of your shipment. We'll show you how many total items you've added to this point, carton count, volume, weight, pro gear, pads, all of the above. If I click over to details, it's going to show me uh, all of the photos of items. I didn't add one for the washer, so it's showing me a default. Here in my summary, uh, I'll see designated with a little E uh, if exceptions have been added. If additional photos are available, I'll get a little plus icon so I could click in and view the item, see that overview, and any additional images that exist. If I need to add or edit, I can also easily do that here by going into edit item. I can make appropriate changes, add additional photos and save accordingly. It's that easy to create items. Uh, I'll go ahead and take a quick pause and see if there's any questions or comments Darch will build those for us. Yes, Casey, the first question is from Dante. Does the voice dictation feature work without internet? Uh, that's an Apple thing. So I, I think so. Uh, it really doesn't have any bearing uh, on the app or it's not something that we've developed or control. Um, so on whatever device you're using, if it has voice dictation enabled, then, uh, then it should work. I don't see any reason why um, connectivity would impact that. I think it's a built-in keyboard thing with, uh, with Apple and Android. Thanks, Casey. The next question is from Richard. How are stickers produced? Stickers are produced uh, in our settings portal, and I'll get into that in detail a little bit later in the presentation. All right, Richard again wants to know if we can copy items, for example, a 3.0 carton with the same exception that repeats. We do not currently have the copy function. Uh, however, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to add those things. Uh, copy function does seem like a nice feature, so we can put that on our roadmap. Awesome. And Mike wants to know if we can track which items will go into which vaults in storage. Not yet. We, we do have plans for that as well. So our, our mover storage app, which is going to control uh, warehouse management and vault assignment and, and uh, put a lot of power in the hands of your warehouseman, we are going to be integrating these two. And uh, big picture down the road, yes, I can look at any vault. I can see exactly which items are in there. I can view pictures and histories and all of that. Uh, so we have plans for that. We have not completed that integration yet. Great. And then Peter also wants to know if we can customize the item list because we are a commercial office mover. Uh, 
Yeah, the items list is fully customizable. You can have any number of default items. Uh, you can also just create items on the fly. Excellent. Cheryl wanted to know if the app is approved by the state of North Carolina. I'll take that one. We don't know if states regulate digital inventories, but if your state does regulate digital inventories, then please let us know and we're happy to work with your state to get this approved with your state authority. Uh, yeah, quick note on that. You know, each state is obviously going to have their different requirements. Uh, we've built this to meet or exceed um, any standards that we're aware of. I've actually been in direct contact with the Department of Defense. Uh, we are a transportation service provider. I have a SCAT code. I do military work as well. So I went straight to the top of the household goods uh, division there. And the answer I got from the DOD was they do not regulate or approve uh, or certify any digital inventory apps. It is the responsibility of the TSP and the end user to make sure that whatever software they choose is compliant with the regulations that they've set forth. And like I said, we built this with those regulations in mind from the very beginning. So I would assume that if we are going to be compliant with uh, DOD, then uh, we should be compliant with most agencies out there. Yep, makes sense. The next question is, will this app be available in South Africa? Great question. Yes, this app will be available worldwide. Couple more questions. Can the summary be downloaded as a PDF or does it need to be accessed only through the app? Uh, the summary will be accessed uh, via PDF, downloadable, and you can email. And then what's the ETA for integration with the Mover Storage app? I can take that one. We are looking at second quarter of this year. And then Dante just confirmed that the military is going to make digital inventories mandatory as of May 15th of 2023. Thank you, Dante. Those are all the questions I have for now, Casey. You can continue with the presentation. Okay, uh, perfect. I'm gonna move on. Um, so just kind of wrapping up with the summary page here, you do have some search options and some filter options. So you know, if, I, if I'm on item number 400 and I'm trying to find something that I had previously created, I can search. Uh, I can also sort by various criteria, volume, alphabetical, when they were created, uh, et cetera. So easy to get in and access and find what I need as a user. Uh, now that I've completed building my inventory, I'm going to move on and complete this stage. Here's where you can collect digital signatures as dictated by your settings, um, whether it's required by the supervisor and the customer or one or the other. and now I will go ahead and move on to the next stage. Uh, in this particular workflow, stage one is loading at origin. I've set up a local job coming in and out of storage. Uh, the crew has now completed their load and they're heading back to the warehouse. And we wanna verify as we unload the trucks that we account for all items. So I'm gonna head out to the summary and I'm gonna start scanning things as they come off the truck. I'll just click the scan. And I'll see the dryer has been accounted for. And as I continue this process, again, this can be done by multiple users at the same time. The entire inventory will update with each action. That code was not used in this particular shipment. So there are safeguards in place that don't allow you to reuse a code or if uh, you printed out some extras and didn't utilize them, you'll get some messages along the way. Tried to keep my item list fairly short here, but I also wanted to give a nice overview of some of the different types of items. Okay, I'm down to my last item here. I've accounted for everything. I've got actually two items left. And I discover that a sticker fell off or I lost something, can't find it. I cannot move on to the next stage until I've accounted for every single item. So in that case where an item is missing, sticker's been lost or damaged, 
you have an override feature. So I can go ahead and just click on this item. I can override scan. This is gonna require an explanation. And I can account for that item manually and I'll get a little override indicator. Uh, everything's now been scanned off and accounted for at the warehouse. I'm going to move forward. There's no customer present, uh, so I'm just requiring a supervisor signature here. And this flow will continue as such. Uh, now we're on, you know, stage three, which is going to be maybe a couple months later. The customer has requested their delivery from storage, and as I load the trucks, I want to account for all these items. I would just follow that same scanning process until I've accounted for everything and the truck is loaded. Uh, final stage would be delivery at destination. As things come off the truck, I can scan them, account for them, override, et cetera. Okay, there's also uh, the ability to add additional photos and notes at any stage. So once the initial stage has been completed and the inventory is finalized, you obviously cannot make any changes to that. You can't edit your exceptions. You can't do anything to that original inventory. However, you could document along the way. So I can't edit, I can view, I can override, or I can add additional photos or notes. So maybe as something is coming out of uh, storage, I find some additional damage or something along those lines. I can note that along the way. And then I would just proceed with scanning until I've accounted for everything, move on, complete this stage, and eventually close out the job once I've completed all requirements. I'll go ahead and pause here for another moment, uh, see if we have any additional questions. Yes, we do. Mike asked if the app will allow for checking items in and out during access. I'm not sure I follow. So would this be along the lines of um, like a partial delivery out or a, a customer comes to your warehouse and uh, removes a few items? Mike said yes. Yes. Okay. So it does. I mean, once, so once we get, in this case, stage one is uh, loading at or origin. Stage two is delivery to warehouse, the job is now in stage three status. So at any point on stage three, uh, items can be scanned and accounted for. So under, under that example, if a customer comes and removes five items while they're in storage, I would wanna make sure and scan those as they come out. And then when we, when we get to the point, maybe it's months or years later, where we're going to deliver the rest of the shipment, those five items would already be accounted for and checked off. And then I would just continue to check off the rest of them. Um, you know, there may be a scenario there where you want to maybe create a separate shipment only accounting for those five items. Um, there's a couple different options for workflow, but the simple answer is, yeah, that, that process would be supported. Thank you, Casey. Dante is asking if the customer can log in and download their inventory. They can, yeah. I'll show you the customer portal here shortly. Uh, they can view all the photos and notes, and then they can also uh, download the PDF summary. Great. Mike has a follow-up to his previous question on partial deliveries. Is it the same if they need to add a few items later? Uh, yes. Uh, I'll show you that as we get into some of the settings but I can, I can revert stages if I need to. Um, so I could back up a stage and add some additional items. Um, again, it might be a workflow thing where in that scenario, I would probably wanna just create a separate shipment uh, and account for just those items that were added. It, it, it's, it, it's gonna be personal preference. It's gonna be kind of the path of least resistance. Um, what's going to take the least amount of effort and, and what's going to be the easiest uh, for the duration of the job. Nice. Jorge wants to know if there is an option in the app to assign an inventory number for each item. Um, related to uh, like using a traditional sticker role as opposed basically using an alternate method aside from QR code. Is that the question? We'll give Jorge a second to respond to that. 
In the meantime, Jim wants to know if you vault at the residence, can you skip the warehouse check-in check-out process? Yes, so um, you can build custom shipment types with the stages that you want, right? And so you'll be able to dictate, you may still want to have that stage of arrived at warehouse, loaded from warehouse, but those stages wouldn't require a full scan or wouldn't require signatures, or you just don't include that stage at all. So you could create a shipment type that maybe it's just called um, you know, local direct and it only has two stages. The first stage is building the inventory. Uh, the last stage is scanning it all at destination and you don't have to do anything in between. Uh, so that's one of the beauties here is you can create a workflow that suits your needs for various types of shipments. Absolutely. Jim also asks if you can utilize non-QR code numeric stickers. Yeah, okay. So I think that was the, the other question as well. At this moment, no. However, we are already currently building some new features and that is one of them. And so uh, you would be able to bypass the QR code scan and you would be able to manually enter a lot number, a sticker number and a color. So we, we have that feature in progress. I think Jorge just responded to our earlier question. He says, QR codes are digitally scanned but a regular number can be read by a person. Just in case we are looking for a specific item and we don't have digital service available. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and you'll actually see that here on the, on the individual items. So we have a, a label number, which is easy to follow. Uh, you know, you can create up to 9,999 labels per shipment. And those are gonna be created and printed out starting at 001 up to 9999. So yes, you can reference by label number. And then we do have the digital QR code as well uh, that can be referenced. So yes. Okay. Jorge, I hope that answered your question. And Dante wants to know if the crew will be able to use their cell phone to check off stickers or will it have to be a tablet? No, phone, phone and tablet, um, all Apple and Android devices. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I actually prefer the phone. It, it's easier in your hand. Uh, it's just kind of a little bit smaller screen, which in this case, I, I prefer the phone operation. Um, I'm only presenting on tablet because it's a bigger screen for, uh, for this webinar. And, you know, maybe the, maybe the crew lead or supervisor might have a tablet. You know, we don't expect every other crew member to bring a tablet to work. So we've built it for phone use primarily. Totally. And they can do the inventory in parallel as long as they have connectivity. Right, Casey? As long as they have connectivity, everybody can build in parallel. You could have 10, 20 guys all building one inventory. The next question is, when will this app be available on the Google Play Store? This app will be available on both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store next week. We will send out an announcement once the apps are live on both stores. And the last question for now from Tom is can I get a copy of this presentation so I can share it with my team? Absolutely, Tom. We will share a recording of this webinar with all the attendees. Okay, uh, wonderful. Let's, uh, let's move on here. So I'm going to show you the customer portal and then I will get into our settings and talk about labels and shipment types and all of that. <clears throat> so you're gonna send an invite via email to your customer and they can register for the customer portal. When they log in, this is what they're going to see. Uh, they can do this on their phone, computer, you know, any connected device. I'm going to see company contact information. If I need to reach out, I'm going to see the current job status and stage. And down here, you're going to see your inventory sorted by room. So I can filter through. Okay. I can also click in and see this item has an exception or this item has additional photos. I can click in and I can see the full history of this item all of those other details, uh, the user that added it, high value, serial numbers, pro gear, et cetera. I can also see any photos that are taken, when they were taken, and I can see the history of uh, scanning on this, who created the item, who scanned it all along the way. Here, I'm also gonna have access to that PDF and click on print and download that PDF. I'll get into this a little bit uh, later as well, but there's your inventory summary. I can also see uh, date and timestamp, signature history here in the portal as well. 
if this is a customer that has multiple shipments, uh, maybe they have a prior job that they did with you, they have a future upcoming job, uh, maybe for whatever reason you've created multiple shipments for this one job, they'll have a drop down here where they can select which shipment they want to view. I'm going to move on now to our CMS, our settings module. Um, before I do that, any quick questions on customer portal? Not on the customer portal, but Dante asks if the inventory summary counts the number of pieces. It does, yeah. And I'll get into some more detail on the, on the inventory summary here coming up. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, uh, I'm going to get into our CMS, our settings portal here. Um, this is kind of the back end where you're going to be able to set everything up. You'll have a quick, uh, quick overview, simple dashboard at this point. You can manage your company information. You can easily assign users and permission levels, you know, view your entire uh, customer list with tags, some basic settings, room list. Uh, there were a couple questions about rooms and items. So here's where you can set up, you know, your default rooms that are available when that dropdown pops up uh, again, or you can just create rooms on the fly in the app. Same thing with items list. So there was the uh, commercial items question. Yeah, you can have a whole default list of your commercial items. Tag management. Uh, Casey? Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Peter had a question earlier on whether the item list can be customized and what fields in the item can be customized. I think this is a good place to show Peter and everyone what fields in the item can be customized. Just name, volume, and weight. Thank you. And those can be changed in the app too. So for example, if you were to select bunk bed, a pre-existing item in the app, and you're gonna pull in your defaults of 100, 100 cubic feet and 700 pounds, you can adjust that in the app to account for that particular bunk bed. Okay. While we're in settings, I wanted to show you one of the coolest parts of mover inventory, and that is the ability to create custom shipment types to meet your workflows. You can create any number of shipment types, uh, dictate the number of stages to complete that particular shipment, and then also the requirements at each stage. So you can choose whether a scan is required in order to move forward, uh, also whether signatures are required from both the, customi uh, from the customer and the supervisor. You can set these up really easily by clicking add shipment type, and you can choose the number of stages. And then for each stage, you can name and pick the requirements in order to move forward and complete that particular shipment. A lot of basic stuff here in settings. Shipments is really where uh, you're gonna have full control and where a lot of the backend actions are gonna take place. All right, uh, a lot of questions on labels, understandably so. So I've got a shipment here and I can click on manage labels. Here it's gonna show me all of the labels and QR codes that have been generated for this shipment. And if items have actually been assigned to that particular label, I can view exactly which item is associated with that label. Once a label has been used and items assigned, I can't delete it, I can't make any changes to it, so that's permanent record. I can also see which labels maybe have not been used yet for this particular shipment. Label 14 has not been used at all. I can delete that label if I need to. Here's a really nice feature too. Um, when I want to create labels, I can come in here to print QR codes and I can kind of customize what this label is gonna look like. I can choose certain pieces of information that I do or don't want to show. I can also customize this header. You've got two full lines to work with here to get any primary information that you want to appear on each label. And once I get it looking like I want, I can just click on print. It's gonna download a PDF for me. Depending on the number of labels you have, uh, it can take, if you're, if you're creating hundreds of labels, uh, you can expect a little bit of load time, um, but this is what your label sheet is gonna look like. I know there's gonna be some questions about the template that we use and uh, methods for 
um, obtaining those level or those labels. So let me show you here. Okay, so uh, right now we just have one template. Uh, we based it off of this template, OL125LP. These can be purchased in onlinelabels.com. Uh, you have a lot of options for paper type, paper quality, and that's going to dictate the cost. Uh, and also the volume of labels that you purchase will dictate the cost as well. If you just get a, a very plain um, paper label, it's going to be less than one cent uh, per label. I highly recommend these weatherproof polyester uh, laser labels. Um, they're weatherproof, which is huge. They stick really well on the item and they come off really well. They don't tear, they're made of polyester. It's a really high quality label. And uh, if you buy a decent volume, you're gonna be around 10 cents per label, um, even less if you, if you buy a significant volume. So that's where I'll, I'll, I'll stop and field any questions on labels, if there are any. Not yet, but we have one question from Mike and that is, can you upload an already created item list with item names and cubes? Uh, that's something that we could do for you on the back end. If you send us a CSV file with those three basic fields, item name, cube, and weight, uh, we can create those for you in the back end, and we will be developing that uh, upload feature in the future. Great, thank you. Jesse wants to know if those labels will print on any printer. Uh, so, yes, the answer is yes. Um, in that, if you go to the onlinelabels.com and you look at the different um, materials and formats available, some are for laser printers, some are for ink printers. So uh, you'll have to just buy the appropriate paper type. Um, but yes, they, they would be printable on any printer, really. Uh, I know that a lot of um, drivers may have a mobile printer in the field, so they can certainly do that uh, in the field as needed as well. Awesome. And Dante would like to know if we can email the website URL to purchase the labels. Absolutely, Dante. We will email the website URL and the product ID that Casey has up on the screen right now. We will email this to everybody. Yep. Those are the questions for now, Casey. Wonderful. So I'll move on here to a couple of other things. Uh, if I need more labels, right, I'm, I'm going to reference my pre-move inventory. I'm going to uh, see how many items I have, and I'm going to create labels accordingly. If I realize I need some more, I can simply add QR codes, add any number that I need, and that's going to generate some more labels for me. Uh, 10 labels per page, so you'll want to uh, keep that in mind. If you're going to you know, have maybe three stragglers on one page, you might want to add seven more and just have 10 labels to, to work with. Once my labels are complete, I can come back and I can print. You could also print two copies if you want. Um, it, it, you have to be a little careful on the job site, but if you want one label actually on the item inside the padding, you can place it there, and then you can put the same label on the outside of the padding um, for easy scanning. So you know that PDF flexibility allows you to you know print out the the labels as many times as you want. Of course, you have to be careful about matching up those label numbers and making sure that you've got the right one there. Okay, next. Uh, you are going to be able to control and assign uh, the workers that have access to this job. So I'd move on to assign workers. Here's where you can select, you know, who do you want to push this to in the app? You can also dictate the supervisor, which the supervisor is going to be important for offline capability. Uh, if, if they don't have reception out there, only the supervisor is going to be able to build that inventory. Also from the shipment screen is where you can invite your customer to the portal. You can see the status of that invite as well, pending, invited, or registered. So you can make sure that they have uh, seen it, make sure that they've registered and have access. All right, I'm gonna go inside the shipment itself. This screen's gonna look pretty familiar. Um, it's very similar to the customer portal. We've got a little bit more detail, a little bit more action here, but I'm going to get an overview. Uh, item counts were asked about, so I've got item counts, I've got carton counts, total volume and weight if I've tracked that throughout, and tallies for the various uh, specific item types. Same thing, I can view by room. I can check out 
detailed exceptions, additional photos, scan history. If that item was overridden manually, I would see that here with that explanation. Uh, here's where you can also download and print the summary. So I'll show you guys what this looks like. Uh, you're gonna have a header with your shipment title, origin, destination. This should cover most requirements. And this is also part of that uh, label customization, shipment name customization. You can make sure that you're uh, titling these shipments with appropriate info so that you can get this for presentation purposes. Here's your summaries and counts displayed here. And then here's what your descriptive inventory is gonna look like. This is gonna be sorted by label number from high to low. I know a problem with a lot of traditional electronic inventories is you get a code AW74. Well, how are you supposed to find AW74? You can find label number seven pretty easily. It'll be sorted again, lowest to highest on label numbers. You'll have uh, the item description, the room, of course, and then those toggles, if you selected those toggles, CP, PBO, electronic serial numbers, high value, pro gear. Uh, we'll be expanding on pro gear a little bit to uh, further separate member or spouse pro gear. Um, we'll be adding a firearms toggle to help track those as well. So we've got a couple little things in the work in the works also. Disassembled by customer, disassembled by user. If you get in a situation where you need to print this inventory out, and uh, get those initials and sign-offs. We've got a method for you to do that as well. And also getting those uh, signatures at origin and destination uh, by hand if you need to, if you need to print this out, as well as a scan and user history. Last thing I'll show is uh, we had talked about, you know, maybe if I need to go back and add something, uh, a common scenario would be at origin, the supervisor finished up the inventory and then found a couple straggler items. Um, only admin on a computer can do this. So someone with admin credentials can log into the shipment and force a status change to go back to step one so they can add those additional items. That can be done uh, at any stage. I can revert back um, that there was that scenario of maybe items coming into storage after the fact. If I wanted to revert back to a previous stage, I can do that here as well. I'll go ahead and pause uh, for some additional questions here. Sure. Mike Foster is asking if the voice dictation feature works only in English. If a crew member is fluent in Spanish, can he do the voice dictation in Spanish and print in English? That's a very good question and I'll take that. Many people don't know that Apple and Android devices both have the ability to do voice dictation in multiple languages. In fact, Google's voice dictation supports 119 languages and Apple supports 31 languages. And Spanish is supported by both platforms. You may need to set up your preferred dictation language in the device's settings menu. And Mike C is asking, do workers who have helped create the inventory have ongoing access to view the customer inventory after the job has been put away in storage? I hope not, and for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, so that the answer to that is no, they won't have access. Well, it, it's a two-pronged answer. They will have access until you don't let them, right? So that's gonna go back to uh, worker management. And so, you know, I've assigned a crew at origin to go out and build this inventory and then bring it into storage. If I just leave these checked and they will be able to log into the app and they'll still be able to see the shipment uh, throughout the, the course of the, the stages that are set up. Now, it's very unlikely that the same crew from origin will handle all stages. So, you know, in the meantime, I may want to come in and remove access. And then when uh, the next stage comes up and I've assigned, you know, my warehouse crew to get it loaded out, then I can come in and change the access level. So you can dictate who can see it and when they can see it. Thank you, Casey. Dante says, you guys have done an outstanding job with this. Thank you, Dante. Should we estimate 30 labels per 1,000 pounds? 
Uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the traditional methods are going to apply. Um, you know, one, one paper inventory sheet covers 30 items, usually about 30 pounds. Uh, nothing changes here in that regard. Um, so yeah, I think you can use those traditional methods. You know, our labels are a little bit bigger and fancier than your old colored roll of stickers, but still it's, you know, one sticker per item or one sticker per carton, one label per item, one label per carton. Great. Peter asks, how does this sync with Movgistics and what are the steps? I'll take that. Right now, our first release of Mover Inventory is available as a standalone product. Mover Inventory will be fully integrated with Movgistics around April. That's our plan. And beyond that, it will be fully integrated with Mover Storage in the second quarter of this year. Our goal is to build a holistic storage and inventory platform for our customers before summer. Yeah, and maybe I can show that a little bit to um, actually, you know, creating a shipment. So when I go to add a shipment, uh, you're going to have just a plethora of fields um, to enter as much data as you need. And this is something where you'll see a lot of familiar fields uh, such as, you know, contact reference, account reference, work order reference, um, move coordinator, volume and weight, addresses, you know, all of these fields exist in Movgistics. So you'll be able to seamlessly push a job to move her uh, inventory and create that shipment. Jesse asks, what size are the stickers and is it just a one size label? Currently, we only have one size label. They're, they're four inches wide by two inches high. So on a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet, uh, you'll have 10 labels. I can show that uh, label detail again here for you. So here's, here's the, the label template that we have. Uh, we will most likely add a couple different uh, templates in the future, maybe a consolidated label, maybe you could get 20 per sheet. Um, again, we've just found that this size label is really nice. I get some really good info here. It's readable um, and it's kind of in between where I can get a decent amount of labels per sheet. Mike Foster is also asking, when the syncs with Movgistics, Will this pull the rooms, items, cubes, and weights from the CRM so that the items are already set up in the app? Absolutely, Mike. You'll be able to push the item list from Movgistics into more inventory. You'll be able to push out shipments and customers as well. And you will be able to access the digital inventories created in more inventory from Movgistics. So it's going to be a full-on integration. Any other questions? Yes, one more just popped up. Any knowledge for rolls of labels instead of sheets for mobile printers? No, I'm not, I'm not aware of any rolls. Um, now, you can keep in mind that there are a lot of different options for the paper that you choose. Um, the strategy I use, like I said, I, I like these polyester labels. Uh, they are they can be a little bit pricey and you are trying to guess how many labels you're going to need and so you may print five extra sheets and you don't need them or you might be two sheets short so there's a little bit of a guessing game on the number of labels to print my strategy though is i print out the nice polyester labels based on my best estimation of the number that i need and then i'll also print out just a couple pages on standard printer paper and if the guys get into a point where they need more labels and they've run out of the nice polyester ones they have some just on standard printer paper. They can cut them up and they can tape them on with just clear tape. Uh, those are really good for boxes, you know, uh, for miscellaneous items. Um, you know, maybe you want a combination of I'm going to go with some lower quality paper uh, versus the polyester and do half and half and say, you know, use use the lower quality for the boxes, use the higher quality for the furniture. So it peels off nicely. Um, you know, you can also just get a full a full eight by 11 label sheet that doesn't have any um, pre-existing cuts or marks on it. You can just print it out and cut it up in your paper cutter. So you got some, you know, some different options for paper quality and, and approach. So John is asking if you can use double labels so you can see your scanned items as they come out of the truck, or do you need to unwrap each item? You can do double labels. So you would, you would have to print out duplicates uh, because you just have a PDF, um, you just have a PDF of your labels. So you can print that out as many times as you want. Uh, and so you just gotta be careful about matching up label numbers. If I'm putting label zero, one, two, three on the inside, I need to make sure that label 
Hero123 goes on the outside because it's a unique QR code. And if you've got a different QR code on the inside and the outside, you're going to run into problems. So yes, you, I mean, you could print out five of each label and put them all over the piece if you want. Uh, you just have to be a little bit methodical about how you do that. Mike C would like to know the pricing. Mike, it's only $5,000 per month. <laughs> just kidding, Mike. Casey will review pricing momentarily. Yep. All right. Uh, quick note, um, we are building open APIs. Uh, we can integrate with your current CRM provider or platform. Uh, just go ahead and reach out to us and we can start to scope out the specifics uh, of that integration. And like I said, Mover Inventory is available for use with Movegistics. It's all, also available all by itself. You don't have to use it with any other platform if you don't want. And that'll bring us to pricing. Okay, so pricing plans include, uh, we are offering a 30-day free trial um, to everybody, unlimited jobs, unlimited users. So you can check this thing out for a month and make sure it's a great fit for your company. Uh, after that, you can decide on the plan that you wanna go with. Uh, you can use this as one-off um, per job, $15 per job, prepaid credits, one-time use. Our starter plan allows up to 20 jobs per month. That works out to about $10 per job. Uh, you get about a 10% discount if paid annually. The growth plan comes out to about $8 per job, $3.99 for 50 jobs a month, uh, another discount, a little over 10% if you pay annually. And then our enterprise works out to about $6 per job. Uh, it'll give you up to 100 jobs per month. Uh, you know, even if you look at the $15 per job, I guarantee that this thing will pay for itself three or four times over just on that single job with the time saved. I would estimate if you've got a three-man crew out there doing an inventory, you're gonna do it in, in two thirds, if not half the time of a paper inventory and the, the money saved there on labor, work comp and all of that, uh, this thing will pay for itself. We are offering some special promotions. If you're a Movegistics CRM user, you'll get an additional 15% off all pricing. And if you attended this webinar and sign up for an annual plan, uh, you'll get an additional 10% off there. Uh, you can reach out to us at sales at intensity.com or reach out to Adarsh or myself directly. So that's our pricing. And that concludes our webinar. I'll turn it back over to Adarsh to uh, answer any last questions and send us off. Thank you, Casey. Yes, just before we wrap up, there is one last question from Jim. Is there a planned integration with Windfall? Yes, Jim, as Casey mentioned earlier, we are building open APIs. So we are happy to connect with any product out there, including Windfall. Feel free to connect us with Windfall or have them reach out to us and we'll be happy to work with them. If you're using Windfall, you really should check out our Mover Storage app. That's also available as an independent platform. Uh, I think you'll love what you see there. And Mike Foster has a follow-up question on pricing. Does the pricing roll over? If I have the enterprise plan, and if I do 90 jobs this month, do I get 110 jobs the next month? No, uh, those are, are on a monthly basis. All right, we will now conclude this webinar. Thank you, Casey, for a great presentation. And thank you once again, everyone, for taking the time to attend this webinar. I really hope you found this webinar useful. Please send us an email if you would like to sign up for the free trial. Have a great weekend, everyone, and stay safe.